You are listening to a recording from the 2021 Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair. We would like to take a moment to thank the residency programs who have taken the time to present at our fair this year. This year's Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by Pumanar Recap, the best resource for your physiatry clinical preparation, audition rotations, board preparation, and beyond. Pumanar Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and even oral board cases. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, PMNR scholars, for having us. Um, it's another year, um, and my hair's just getting longer. <laughs> uh, so tonight, what I want to do is first just highlight our, our website. I think that has a lot of the good background information about our program um, and a lot of the most important contact information, as well as some of our more interesting news feed articles, et cetera. Um, tonight, I'm going to hopefully just talk a little bit about Gainesville as a, as a city and what it's like to, to live here, work here, and then um, go over some frequent last questions that came up along the interview trail last year that seemed to be pretty high yield. And then lastly, I'd like to hand it over to um, my partner in crime, Dr. Andy Dubin, I think it's online, as well as our, our residents, who I also see on the line because um, nine o'clock is, is past my bedtime. So <laughs> I, might, I might fall asleep soon. I'll try to not do it live there. So um, go next slide. So this is our current class. Uh, so you have PMNR, we're very new. This is our very first class, our PGY, our current PGY2 class. This is a really exciting time for us. Um, and so there's a lot of change, and a lot of updates, um, but this is probably the most exciting part of, of our growth here at UF. And I did see that they um, heeded my, my request to join tonight. So later in the evening, I'll um, log off so you guys can ask them some questions because I think their information is probably a lot more valuable than um, my PowerPoint. These are our. Up. Bring it over here. These are our future uh, our residents yeah. for next year. These will all be all PGY 2s for 2022. And so we're really excited. You know, we're really, really excited about the growth of this program. Um, so, outline of a typical day. I should back up. First of all, after listening to some of the presentations from the other programs, I will say that our program's probably more similar to other programs than it is different. And a lot of that is because graduate medical, medical education is pretty highly regulated in America. Um, and so I'm just going to try to highlight some of the specific uniques for, uh, unique things for, for UF. So typical work day um, when you're on the inpatient service and true of the clinics as well as about 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Admissions tend to be 9, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., although we can sometimes get later admissions than that. Uh, what kind of equipment do we have? Uh, we have an EMG lab set up. We certainly have our own fluoro suite for interventional spine procedures. And then in our clinics, we use portable ultrasound equipment, pretty standard for most programs, I'd say. Call schedule, it's at home. Uh, this should be an asterisk by this because currently we're in the works of revamping the call program and that's at the direction of our, our residents. So asking them might be a good way of getting information how things might look when you guys get here as um, PGY2s uh, in a couple of years. But right now, the way things are is you take home call and it's for one week. So that includes one Friday to the following Friday morning. Um, you don't answer pages, obviously, during business hours during the week. It's only during the weekends that you would have to answer um, sort of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. calls. Geography. So Gainesville is in north central Florida. And my chair, Kevin Vincent, likes to say, Gainesville, the thing about Gainesville, it's like, two hours from everything great, which is awesome, but it's always, you know, it's also two hours from everything. So it's kind of far from things. 
I think that geography is kind of nice. It allows us to be able to get to things like um, attractions in Orlando. We can get to the beaches in Tampa. It's only a couple hours away. I certainly have to drive there pretty frequently on the weekends. And then you have Jacksonville beaches and St. Augustine. So there's a lot of great attractions around, but Gainesville is a small town. Um, it's kind of the quintessential college town the population size ebbs and flows with the calendar, I should say the academic year. Um, during the summertime, it's a lot you know, less traffic, or it's a lot quieter. And during the um, academic year, things pick up. It's a little bit more vibrant, a little bit younger, a little bit crowded <laughs> where we are. Um, so we are all located on the UF campus and that expands a pretty broad, broad area, but um, the UF Rehab Hospital sort of right square in the middle between the east and west ends of the campus. Um, our other home base is the Orthopedic Sports Medicine Institute or OSMI on the very far west of campus. And then I do my clinic and I, I do procedures along with Dr. McGargle um, for the spine service at the UF Heart and Vascular Hospital, which is all the way on the our east side of the campus. So if you were to drive the way Google Maps would tell you to drive, probably more in the traffic times, it would take about 15 minutes end to end. There's certainly a lot more easier ways to go using the campus route, but um, in general, it's probably uh, 14 minutes one end to the other and right smack in the middle is the UF Rehab Hospital, which is um, where you spend your PGY2 year. Uh, people wanted to know, so you have a, a college town, what are some of the places people can live in? Um, it kind of depends on what you're interested in. And uh, if you're more interested in sort of a suburban or even an ex-urban life, there's certain neighborhoods like Hale, which, you know, think of kind of more white picket fences, farmers markets on the weekend, et cetera, and you know, lots of biking trails, um, uh, that kind of thing. Then there's the far other end of the spectrum, which are areas like Midtown, which is close to the UF um, football stadium, which brings a lot of nightlife and a lot of um, sort of restaurant and bar scenes. There's a newer area at the town called Celebration Point, which is um, where there's a lot of business and development happening. And it's supposed to be sort of a, a living and walkable community. Um, my wife tells me that Gainesville's really, you know, making it because we finally have an anthropology <laughs> that's coming to Celebration Point. So, you know, it's the little things uh, that really show that Gainesville is um, on the up and up. But these are some of the neighborhoods I think people could kind of look into as places for residents to live in. Um, and they each have their kind of pluses and minuses. You would want to have a, a car if you lived here um, as a resident to be able to kind of commute. There's a a decent bus system, but um, with call and everything else, it would be kind of not not the not the most sound sound idea to not have a car. Uh, wellness opportunities. So there's a calendar we have about a lot of wellness opportunities here at UF, and it runs the gamut between um, like dance exercise to meditative things, and I certainly think there's really really um, really great programs here. We're lucky to be part of a larger university that just offers a lot of services. And eventually, by the time you guys arrive here, I'd hope to have a resident large position that would be more of a liaison position between residents and, and faculty. Just a sample of the wellness calendar. I don't know if this has been altered since, like with COVID and everything, if there's been, some of these have gone more virtual or not, but um, as you can see, there's just a ton of things, book club, dance for life, a lot of good stuff. And this is our, um, our residence um, with our chairman in the middle, uh, Dr. Kevin Vincent, and one of our attendings, Dr. Ray, and our director of research, Dr. Heather Vincent. Um, a good contact is, Dr. is Tara Smith. Uh, she is our program coordinator. Here's her contact information. So if you do have questions that are a little bit more specific or a first person to contact um, who might be able to direct your question to other people, 
pair is a very good um, email to jot down. And so with that, I'm going to hand it over to my partner in crime, Dr. Andy Dugan. Uh, I don't have slides, but uh, that's okay. I know. Whoops. There we go. Where did I go? There I am. So I don't have slides, but what I want to talk to everybody about is the inpatient experience, whereas a PGY2, you'll spend your first year. And essentially what we've done is built it around uh, multiple services. And it's a 60 bed inpatient rehab hospital that has uh, my group, which is uh, a general rehab group that takes care of burns, polytrauma, amputees, uh, neuromus uh, neurological disorders, neuromuscular disorders, uh, and does most of the transplants, uh, which would be and uh, great learning opportunity all the way around. Uh, the residents really get a chance to run the service. Uh, they will round, we will round together, we'll review every patient, and then really try to give you the opportunity to think the problems through. We sit down and really discuss each patient and then sort of figure out a game plan for the day. And on each admission, really go over the pertinent parts of the, uh, the physical exam to really work at the bedside and learn how to do an appropriate physical exam so that when you get out into uh, your practice, whether it be uh, a hospital-based inpatient practice, consultative practice, or uh, private practice, and you're in your own uh, MSK kind of environment, you really become very facile at uh, neuromusculoskeletal exam. Uh, my partner, Dr. Zari, uh, also runs a general PMNR service, uh, more biased towards cardiac. Uh, we're adding a fellowship trained uh, spinal cord injury attending who will be joining us in September. And uh, her particular love is adaptive sports. So she will also not, be, not only be running an inpatient spinal cord injury service, but she's really been tasked with developing um, an outpatient adaptive sports program, uh, which is very exciting because at UF, we've got a tremendous commitment towards uh, sports, athletics, and uh, really being very involved in the community uh, at the middle school and high school, as well as collegiate level for all level of uh, athletes and now being able to add in a, uh, an adaptive sports program, which would be new to the UF campus is very, very exciting. Um, we are actively recruiting as well for a fellowship trained TBI. First, we currently have uh, one person in the group who will be rotating out probably come January and hopefully we'll have our dedicated TBI attending to flesh out the uh, inpatient rehab unit. We'll have four attendants total. Uh, one spinal cord, one brain injury stroke, and generally two general rehab mixed disability type programs where you really get to take care of a, a wide variety of potpourri of patients. Uh, didactics are for the PGY two year uh, at our own uh, rehab hospital. Next year, as we have both PGY twos and threes, we'll be transitioning between uh, OSMI and the rehab hospital. So about half the didactics will be at one place, half at the other place. And that's really to make sure that we have broad representation from all of the, uh, the faculty. Uh, we really want to uh, you know, branch out and as our program expands and grows, get all of our sports medicine uh, colleagues and our pediatric uh, physiatry and our consultative physiatrists who are over at HVN, uh, progressively more and more integrated into the learning environment. And uh, the best way to do that is in a sense, branch our residents out, really expand their opportunities to uh, interact with the attendants and uh, bring them all to a common place for didactics on Wednesday. It's a dedicated uh, 
protected time. Uh, it starts at one o'clock in the afternoon, goes till four o'clock on Wednesdays, and it is truly protected time. Uh, we will have coverage on the inpatient rehab unit so that the residents are not going to be called out and called away from learning. And as Dr. Sign noted, call is from home. Uh, we have internal medicine and family practice uh, backup coverage. So most of the calls you will get are uh, an individual is having some pain. Can we adjust pain medication? What do you suggest for pain medication adjustment? You may get a call on some simple hypertension uh, issues, but the more complex medical issues will go to internal medicine and family practice. Though as a PGY2, you'll be actively involved in taking care of a lot of the internal medicine uh, issues as well, because you work in a very collaborative fashion with family practice and our internal medicine colleagues, because it's important that you're uh, comfortable uh, doing the medication uh, management and figuring out how your physiatric input and uh, involvement uh, impacts on the, uh, the medical management of the patient. And with that, I'm going to kind of open it up for questions for myself and Dr. Sign. I see Dr. Brownstein is on the line <clears throat> and uh, Dr. Patel, uh, one of our residents as well is on the line. And there's Dr. Brownstein, he's, uh, he's joined us. And uh, I would really probably recommend that you'll get your best answers in terms of what it feels like to be a resident at Gator Nation from uh, Drs. Patel and Brownstein. They have both been on the inpatient rehab unit. I think what's nice is Dr. Brownstein works on my unit and Dr. Patel works on Dr. Zeri's unit so they can really give you a good uh, idea of what goes on there from day to day. So I'm gonna turn it over to them to uh, answer some questions and I'm gonna sit quietly in the background and interject if need be, but I'm gonna do my best to stay quiet. Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Timing five minutes. Thank you so much. Does anyone watching have any questions? Let me pull up this chat. We got so while we look for questions in the chat, just to tell you briefly about myself, um, I'm coming from New York. So I've been in Gainesville for about a month now. Um, quite a big change, as you could imagine. But, you know, what, what attracted me to this program is, first off, a university setting with, a, you know, a, a smaller, intimate PM&R department with experienced faculty from each domain that I'm interested. So, like Dr. Dubin introduced, I'm currently working with him on the inpatient side. Um, we have Dr. Sign on the pain management side. I've already had some exposure to the orthopedic clinic on more of the sports angle. So what, what I appreciate about the program is that there, you know, there's a lot of different opportunities even in the first month that I've been exposed to. All right, um, Dr. Patel, did you, is there anything in the, in the group chat? <laughs> Uh, yeah, just just to pay, piggyback off that. Can you hear me, by the way? Yes. Just want to. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that's an important question. What draw me to the program? I think being a brand new program, um, kind of, there's a lot to think about and a lot of unique opportunities involved in a new program. Uh, I was part of an inaugural class in medical school and was able to really recognize the opportunities and unique opportunities that a new program brings. And I think I use the word new program uh, pretty loosely. Um, I think the faculty involved in UF are very established and not very new. Um, they know what they're doing and they've been involved in other programs and they've been, um, when I was being recruited, I think they really conveyed how much energy they've been putting into the program for a long time. And they were very open to the idea that the incoming class would have a very strong play and uh, influence in how the program would shape and develop. Uh, and that part of the program was probably what most uh, drew me to the, to the program. 
Uh, I really enjoy kind of having an effect on how not only how our uh, residency will play out and how uh, the kind of things that we'll be involved in, but also for the coming years, having a, a key role in that and really kind of being the, the, the guinea pigs for, for you guys and uh, making it a really awesome program. And I think everyone has really, really uh, different perspectives on how life should run and how a program should run. And uh, it kind of just kind of works harmoniously. Two minutes left. Okay. <clears throat> what other questions do we have? So I'm, I'm looking uh, in the chat room. There's a question about expanding rotations to Jacksonville. You know, I, I can't personally answer that. So let me just look at other questions I may be able to comment on. So we, we, we answered what, what drew us to the program. Um, you know, despite coming from New York City, you know, one concern or question I have is, you know, I'm, I'm used to this very big buzzing city. So what's there to do in Gainesville? You know, I, I have a grandmother in, in Southern Florida and that's kind of the extent of my experience. Um, but, but so far I've been, you know, I've been appreciating. There's, there's a lot of restaurants, there's a lot of nearby preserves and parks, a lot of hiking trails. Um, you know, our money goes a lot further in Florida. The apartments that are available, even on a residency salary, are you know far surpass other programs I was considering in New York City. So it's it has been exciting. Um, Dance for Life. I'm not sure how much affiliation that has with PMNR. What comes to mind is Relay for Life, which is this kind of overnight charity program. I'm, I'm thinking that might be what Dance for Life is, but maybe someone else more familiar may be able to comment on that. Um, any, any applicants watching that ha have any questions we haven't touched on? There's a question about future plans to uh, expand into Jacksonville. There is right now uh, a plan at the main campus in Gainesville. They are already uh, they already have had approval and acceptance for building a uh, I think it's a 50 bed rehab hospital uh, with pediatric rehab. Uh, outpatient clinics and adult rehab outpatient clinics that will probably be completed in approximately two to three years. Uh, the timeline's a little up in the air right now, uh, as with everybody's timeline with uh, COVID sort of impacting on things, but the plans have been approved. Apparently the Board of Trustees has uh, signed off on it. So that is in the works for expansion into a UF Jacksonville for PM&R, and that will offer additional opportunities as well for uh, residents particularly who are looking for some inpatient pediatric exposure, in addition to a very comprehensive outpatient feeds exposure that we have here, and mixed disability groups with pediatric neurology, neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, and PM&R and urology all being in one clinic. And we are unfortunately out of time. Thank you for a fabulous presentation, UF. If you wanted to stay and just answer those last like two questions in the chat or just type some emails that people can reach out to, um, PM&R scholars definitely thanks you for being a part of this evening. And thank you for all the students who are in attendance. Thank you. So for anyone that's still on, uh, there's some good questions at the very end about uh, receptiveness of the faculty and OMT. And as uh, a DO uh, in the program, I can speak to kind of both those real quickly. Um, again, one of my big reasons for, for ranking UFL was so high was uh, the faculty and how receptive uh, they would be. And from our experience starting, I'd say they've been nothing but receptive. Um, the autonomy that we have on daily rounds is, is pretty incredible as a as any resident in a program. Uh, we have you know, full autonomy to see patients, uh, to treat patients and suggest treatments. Uh, and from an OMT's perspective, 
Uh, there's plenty of time during the day and during the morning to, uh, to come up with a plan for OMT and identify different patients' needs. And also uh, there's always a setting that you can trial different OMT techniques. And the great thing is that we collaborate with PT and OT so closely that we can suggest different treatments with them. We can join them on their therapy sessions and kind of assist in their therapy programs. And uh, I was actually able to incorporate some muscle energy techniques on a couple of patients with spasms and uh, really, really incredible to kind of share uh, our kind of toolbox with the rest of the hospital and uh, some therapists and uh, who are and are not familiar with things that we do. Thank you so much again. We're going to close the meeting room and I hope everyone has a good night. And I include my email for anyone that uh, has any last minute questions.